And this is the most important step in your investment journey. It's to consider what is the long-term plan? What is your long-term vision? Do you want to invest for cash flow, appreciation, long-term, short-term, passive, active, etc.? Seriously, this is where you have to start. So where do you see yourself in your investments in one year, five years, and 10 years from now? Develop that crystal clear criteria now and take action. Welcome to the Physicians and Properties Podcast. The show where we teach you how investing in real estate can give you the freedom to practice medicine and live life how you want. Doctor. 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 Now, here's your host, Dr. Alex Schlow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Physicians and Properties Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Alex Schlow. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, first off, thank you. But secondly, you've probably noticed that some of the episodes that we do are solo episodes, and this is another one of those. Don't worry, next week we're going to interview another incredible real estate investor or entrepreneur for the Physicians and Properties podcast. But today, I figured we'd spend some time talking a little bit more about residential assisted living homes. If you haven't already, you can book a free coaching call with me. And I've been so fortunate to talk to approximately 50 people on my rides home from work and talk more about real estate and help them get started investing in real estate. But I tell you what, the number one topic of conversation, the number one question that I get is how can I get started investing in residential assisted living homes? So I figured, why not take some time and talk a little bit more about residential assisted living homes today? So you may be sitting there driving in your car thinking, what is a residential assisted living home? Well, a residential assisted living home is a residential property. Think your house, for example. And this property provides care and assistance to seniors who need help with activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, and medication management. These homes offer a more home-like environment than your typical nursing home that you're probably familiar with, with a smaller number of residents and more personalized care. So this is not your big box nursing home that you're thinking of. This is not uh, your huge facility that many of us rotated in while we were in medical school. This is a house that's been converted to house seniors and to take care of them and help them with their activities of daily living. So you're probably thinking, well, why would I invest in a residential assisting living home? Well, there's several reasons why investing in RALs can be a smart investment strategy for physicians and real estate investors in general. Number one is growing demand. The demand for residential assisted living homes is increasing as the baby boomer population ages. Right now, we're not even at the point where the baby boomer population is living in these homes. That's to come, which means the demand for these homes is going to continue to increase. Believe it or not, there are roughly 77 million baby boomers. And every day until 2030, approximately 10,000 of these baby boomers were turned 65. And seven out of 10 of them are going to require long-term care in their lifetime insert residential assisted living homes. And believe it or not, we are already 1 million assisted living beds short. So residential assisting living homes offers a valuable service that is already in high demand and that demand is going to continue in the future. These homes also are very profitable and offer substantial cash flow. And this can be in either a lease model where you own the real estate and lease that out to an operator or in an owner-operator model where you own the real estate and you also operate the business as well. We'll talk a little bit more about this later. One thing that we love the most about owning these residential assisted living homes is just that personal fulfillment. Knowing that we bought an A-class, a high-class, beautiful home that is caring for someone's grandma, someone's grandpa, allowing them to live in a luxurious, safe environment that improves their quality of life and also impacts the community. We absolutely love that. So that's just three reasons why investing in residential assisted living is really important and can benefit not only you, but also the community. So if you want to get started investing in residential assisted living, first and foremost, just like any investment, you have to think about what are your goals? Why? Do you want to invest in residential assisted living homes? Why do you want to invest in real estate? 
If it's to be a passive, completely hands-off investor, then investing in residential assisted living homes is not for you unless you invest with someone else, such as like a syndication model, or you offer a private lending scenario where you give someone cash to purchase a home. And stay tuned, we may have some of these investment opportunities for you in the future. But first, you have to determine your goal. And this is the most important step in your investment journey. It's to consider what is the long-term plan? What is your long-term vision? Do you want to invest for cash flow, appreciation, long-term, short-term, passive, active, etc.? Seriously, this is where you have to start. So where do you see yourself in your investments in one year, five years, and 10 years from now? Develop that crystal clear criteria now and take action. And if you've thought about this and your goals are, hey, I want to invest in the residential assisted living space, then the next thing that you need to do is research the market. Identify areas where there's a high demand for residential assisted living homes. Consider demographic trends such as where's the aging population moving to, where are they living, how many retirement communities live in the area, how many seniors are moving to that market. Another thing that's really important is to consider the number of operators that are available. The beauty of residential assisted living investing is that there is a need for these homes in every city in America. I guarantee it. But you have to figure out some of these trends to see, is this going to be the most profitable investment for me? And can I make the most impact in the community? If there's already tons and tons of residential assisted living homes, maybe you pick a tertiary market or you pick another market in the area that you could invest in. But you got to research the market, find the location that you want to invest in. Location, location, location. Same with any form of real estate investing is so important. Next step you have to find an exceptional realtor. Now, the really cool thing about this is that there are realtors who actually specialize in residential assisted living homes. It's really hard to find somebody who does, but trust me, it is going to make your life so much easier. These realtors will also often have a list of operators, service providers, licensing contacts. Typically, they know the regulations to the area. So they can tell you, hey, this home, it is possible to get a license to become a residential assisted living home, or it's not. Or this home would make a really exceptional residential assisted living home because it's right next to this hospital or this clinic where a lot of seniors get their medical care. So there's a wealth of information that these specialized exceptional realtors have. So definitely spend some time to try and find them. It can be difficult to find an exceptional realtor, and it can be even more difficult to find one that specializes in residential assisted living homes. So ways that you can do this are looking on Google, reaching out to some of the Facebook groups. There's multiple residential assisted living Facebook groups asking them, hey, what realtor did you use? Would you be really willing to share their information? Another avenue would be posting on the Bigger Pockets forums asking for realtors in the specific area that you're thinking to invest. Or search for different homes, residential assisted living homes that are already operating in your area reach out to them and see, hey, do they have any realtor recommendations? So there's a lot of ways that you can find a realtor, but this is going to be the most important thing after you've determined your goals, figured out the location you want to invest in, finding the realtor who specializes in residential assisted living is going to be the next most important step. After you figure that out, you want to figure out what form of residential assisted living do I want to do? Do I want to own the real estate and the operations? This means you're hiring the caregivers and you're providing the day-to-day -day care for the residents that live in the home. That includes cooking, cleaning, taking care of them, medication management, etc. So is that something that you have the bandwidth to take on? If you do, it can be very lucrative, but it's also quite time-consuming. You're essentially buying and operating a business and the real estate, so two businesses in one. Another way you can do this is you can buy the real estate and lease this out to an operator. Typically, that looks like you purchase the residential assisted living home, and then you work with your realtor and you work at finding operators who want to own the operations business and operate the home. They're going to be the ones doing the day-to-day -day care for the residents, placing residents in the home, uh, maintaining the home, and doing all of the work that goes in the day-to-day -day aspects of assisted living operations. So that's an option as well. So you can, to recap, one, own the real estate and own the operations, or two, you can own the real estate and lease that out to an operator. There's different pros and cons for this, 
book a call like we discussed before, and we can talk more about it and see, hey, what, what might be more beneficial for you? As I mentioned before, cash flow is incredible in residential assisted living space. But of course, if you don't also own the real estate and own the operation, you're not going to make as much cash flow, but it is going to be more active. If you own the real estate and you lease it out to an operator, you are going to have a more passive investment because you're not running that day-to-day -day operation. Make sense? And just to throw some numbers out there in terms of in terms of cash flow numbers, I have friends who own the real estate, own the operation, and they're making twelve to fifteen thousand dollars per month in cash flow. They're involved in the day-to-day -day operations. They typically hire a property manager, someone who helps them run the day-to-day -day aspect, but they still are much more active in that investment and working more in the day-to-day -day in that investment. So think about that. But the other flip side of that coin is, hey, maybe your cash flow number, the goal that you're looking for, for cash flow in order to quit your job or practice medicine and live life how you want to, may be $10,000 a month. So you'd only really need one of these homes. If you own the real estate and own the operation, you'd only need one of these homes to hit your number. So think about that as well. So you need to, one, determine your goals. Two, research the market and location. Three, find an exceptional realtor who specializes in residential assisted living homes. Four, decide do you want to own the operations and the real estate, which means you're involved in the day-to-day -day care and the day-to-day -day operations of the home, or do you want to lease the home out to an operator? Next, you're going to need to identify potential properties. Typically, your realtor is going to be really helpful for this. There's a lot that goes into identifying a potential property for a residential assisted living home, and the most important thing is licensability. Can this home become a licensed residential assisted living home? Each state, city, county, municipality is going to have different regulations and different requirements in order to become a licensed residential assisted living home. This can be, it needs to be 1,200 feet from another residential assisted living home. This could be a much wider radius that's needed in order to have a residential assisted living home. So look into that because it's super important to know what are the regulations in your area because you have to have a license in order to operate one of these homes. And typically your realtor is going to understand what those regulations are, but it's also helpful for you to do your own due diligence and figure out what these regulations may be. Once you've figured out the regulations piece, then you're able to determine if a specific home that you're interested in is going to be able to obtain a license and is going to be able to be a residential assisted living home investment for you. So look for properties that meet your criteria and also consider the location, the size of the property, and the condition of the property. Are you planning to buy a turnkey residential assisted living home where you just put the operator in, you start bringing in residents, you go from there? Are you planning on buying an already operating residential assisted living home and business? This is an option as well. Are you planning at buying a large single family home and renovating that into a residential assisted living home? See, there's a lot of different options and a lot of different opportunities in this space. Some things that you're going to be looking for in the home is typically you're going to want a ranch level single story home. You want it to be pretty big and it's going to de depend on how many residents you're able to have. For example, in the state of Arizona, you can only have a max of up to 10 residents. In Texas, this is 16. So think about that when you're thinking about the size of the home you're looking to invest in. In order to be the most profitable residential assisted living home, you're going to want to have as many bedrooms and bathrooms as you can. The more private rooms that you can have and lease out, the more money that you're going to make. So think about that. The more bedrooms you have, the more private bathrooms you have, the more private pay residents and private uh, rooms you're going to have to be able to lease out, you're going to make more money that way. You can also have shared rooms. That's totally fine. And a lot of homes have them as well but you're going to make a little bit less income on those shared rooms because you can't rent them out for as much. However, typically what you're looking for is a single story home, as many bedrooms and bathrooms as you can find, and you're going to want it to be a big house. Typically, they say you want at least 300 square feet per resident. So if you have 10 residents in the home, shoot for a 3,000 square foot house. That's going to be really helpful for you and give plenty of space for each of the residents to have as they're maneuvering around the home. We want to make sure we're offering high quality residential assisted living homes. So that's what to look for in a property, okay? So again, determine your goals, research the market and location, find an exceptional realtor, determine if you're going to 
own the real estate and the operations or lease that out to an operator, find a potential property. Next, you found your property, so you need to perform due diligence. So again, this is making an offer on the property and performing due diligence to make sure it's a sound investment. So you're going to want to review the financial statements if it's an already operating residential assisted living home, see how many residents they have, see how much money they're making, see what payroll is. All these sorts of things are really important if you're going to own the real estate and own the operations. We're not going to get too deep into this, but the due diligence in terms of the business is important, but also the due diligence in terms of the house is important. Of course, we want to make sure that we're getting the inspections on the home. We're taking a look at, hey, what's the lifespan of the roof? Are we noticing any leaks in the property? Get the same typical inspections that you're going to get done if you're buying a single family rental, except the single family rental is going to be turned into a residential assisted living home. But this process is just as important as before. After you do some due diligence, you're also going to be working on securing financing at the same time. So you're going to be working with a lender. And there are some lenders out there who specialize in residential assisting living homes because you're going to want to secure financing for the property. Typically, if you're buying the home to then lease it out to an operator, this is going to be a commercial lender that you're going to need and a commercial loan product that you're going to be using for one of these homes. If you're going to buy the home and own the operations, then sometimes you can actually use an SBA loan for that. We're not going to get into too much detail in terms of the different forms of financing today because I want this episode to just be kind of broad strokes on how you can get started, but securing financing is really important. After you've secured financing, well, now it's time to close on the home. Congratulations, you have bought a residential assisted living home. It's incredible. So in summary of everything we've talked about, residential assisted living homes are incredible investment opportunities. There's a huge shortage of these homes. There's incredible demand. The opportunity is there. How to do it? You have to determine your goals, research the market and location, find an exceptional residential assisted living home realtor, identify potential properties, determine if you want to lease it to an operator or also own the operations, perform your due diligence, secure your financing. Bam, you're done. You did it. So let me know what you think of this episode. Was it helpful? Was it not? Do you want to invest in residential assisted living homes? If so, reach out to me. Let's talk more and figure out, hey, would this be a good strategy for you? So if you gained some value from this episode, please do me a favor, leave us a review and a five-star rating on whatever podcast listening platform you use. It really helps us grow and helps us reach the physicians that we want to reach. So thank you for doing that. If you want to find out more, you can contact me through Physicians and Properties. We have a website. There's a Physicians and Properties Facebook group and a LinkedIn page, or you can find me on Instagram as a slow three. I'm happy to connect with anyone and everyone. Book a call, continue to follow along. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Hey, real quick, if you're still listening to this, I'm assuming you got value from it. So I need your help specifically. My two-year vision with this podcast is to help 100,000 physicians learn how investing in real estate can give you the freedom to practice medicine and live life how you want. There are two main ways that a podcast grows. One is the ratings and reviews, and the other is word of mouth. If you can please leave me a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, as well as send this to one to two friends that you think would get value from it, we can reach the physicians that we want to reach. Thanks in advance and talk to you on the next episode. Please note that the information shared on this podcast is for informational purposes only. It should not be considered financial or medical advice. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the host and the guests and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Department of Defense or the United States Air Force.